wanted to be a judge who knows just what is right and wrong and be good and be strong and on my swan up in the air I'm flying searching for justice can't you see me trying right is the reason I But because I am a good liar, I know what we can do. Let's hear the judge. Yes, because only our friend Klaus can solve it. I hear the wisdom coming from the gnomes now. And all together we have got the know-how. Because we are people of peace. Sometimes it feels like our work is never done here in the forest. Thank goodness we are on the last case of the day. Order in the court, please. Judge Klaus will now hand down his verdict. It is my decision that the Mole Tuon is guilty as charged. I declare that he has 12 hours to repair the damage he caused digging a tunnel around Sebastian's house. Since he didn't intend to cause harm, perhaps it'll be all right to have help. His family can aid him in repairing the damage. Please come to order. We'll need the signature of both parties on the agreement. Danny, I'm glad we get a little vacation. I know I can use some relaxation. Uh, sounds great, Judge. I'm tired. Mm, seems we've got company. Yes, and they're a bit noisy, aren't they? Mm. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Huh? <clears throat> Greetings from Siberia. It's a pleasure, my friend. My name is Igor Igorovich. I've come from Siberia as fast as possible. You've come far. Can I be of some help to you? Ah, uh, first let me say your reputation as a fair and impartial judge has even come to our ears. Kind of you to compliment me. Still, I'm sort of confused about this. Let me explain to you why I'm here. Our Judge Morchev is ill and we need a replacement. Mm -hmm. He's a regular judge and mm -hmm. cases are piling up. I'd love to help I out, Igor, but we were planning to take a vacation. But I'm begging and pleading it's only for two small days. <laughs> well, perhaps I might go for a few days, but that's all. Yay! <laughs> I'm happy as Pig who is playing in the mud. Imagine my joy, imagine my very deeply felt contentment inside. Guess we can imagine, yep. eh, Danny? Don't forget, you should pack warm clothes. Siberia's cold. As long as there are some pretty girls with warm <laughs> hearts, I don't care how cold it is. Siberia, a major part of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, a land of beautiful buildings and barren snow-covered fields that look like white clouds. It's too bad Henry doesn't come equipped with a heater. This poor gnome is just about frozen solid. Don't worry, I'm confident it will be uh, a bit warmer by the time we get down, say, uh, perhaps only 50 below. Am I imagining things? What are all those and where are they going? The judge, what do you suppose they're in such a hurry about? Gee, I'm also baffled by it. Igor, what's that we see below us? They're lemmings, sir. Every few years they search for a new home. I'm sure they could find a warmer spot to be. These are mysterious creatures. They are mysterious indeed, Judge Klaus. I'm not sure why it happens, but sometimes these lemmings will run, and when they reach the ocean, they jump off the rocks into the water, and they can't even swim. That is the strangest thing I've ever heard of. Yes, but perhaps it's not the strangest of Siberia's mysteries. There are parts that no one's ever even explored. I must remind you, though, we'll be landing quite near my home. We'll still have a walk of 300 feet yet. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'm ready for that, Igor. Walk for 300 feet? Not to worry, dear friends. We have other means of traveling in Siberia you'll like. Ah, 
There's Sasha with the slim. Mm, boy, I'm so happy to see you, Judge Klaus. Oh, sir, just imagine my joy, imagine my happiness, imagine my very small but mm, Yes, we can imagine, wish. but I'm still hoping to get my hands warm. We must get you gloves. And I missed your name. Danny, but I'm sure you're happier to meet the judge. Not at all. I'm always overjoyed meeting any famous gnome. Mm. It's not yet freezing here. You're very fortunate. Oh, and I was hoping to experience some real cold. <laughs> Seems you've experienced plenty of cold, so we'd best get to Nomengrad. Yes, friends, it's time you got warm and comfy once more. Let's go for a ride. It's amazing. My, I'm very impressed. I am pleased to be giving first time lemming sleigh ride to you. All of these lemmings, they just love to please us. <laughs> well, I feel as calm as I could be. This is fun. <laughs> Did you say stop, Sasha? No, but for some reason the lemmings put on the brakes. What? Look! <gasps> Please, don't worry. It's those funny old wolves getting up to their tricks again. Their favorite joke is to scare you. <laughs> <gasps> oh, no! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> It was pretty good joke you played, but now it is time for us to go home. <laughs> it didn't seem as though those lemmings were very happy to be around the wolves. You see, back in our forest, no animal has any reason to be afraid of any other. Well, perhaps if the animals could leave someplace warm, it would be safe. But the risk of starving is so great that... Uh, hmm? They've stopped again. Look, they're sitting down on the job. They may have gotten tired dragging four large gnomes, Sasha. <laughs> Would it not be considered reasonable, since the poor lemmings are tired out, to hop out and make our way on skis? Wonderful! I'm willing to give up my seat. Well, I'll give one lemming the day off, but I still need two to poor lazy me. Let's go. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Klaus, Danny, welcome to beautiful downtown Nomengrad. I'm honored, but I'm not there, Papa. Papa, Papa! My children! Upsy-daisy! I introduce you to my two children, Tatanya and Oleg, and my lovely wife, Sonia. It's a pleasure to meet such a famous gnome as yourself. Come for dinner. Come. I was beginning to think I'd never feel a warm fire again! <laughs> You're much too noisy. Go outside to play. Yes, they should enjoy the warm weather while it lasts. Right. Huh? The climate for tomorrow's festival might not be as warm. I hear it's supposed to cool down. If it gets too warm, the ice melts. Then there's no hockey. Hmm. I'm a big fan of that game. I played every position on my team. Not all at the same time, of course. I'm happy to learn that you play hockey. We're having a match between the bachelors and the married men tomorrow. It's for the championship. I'm impressed. Married men playing bachelors, huh? Danny, I bet the bachelors could use you as a player. Mm, I'm sorry, but I may be a little out of shape to play. <laughs> but he spends time dreaming of playing. Allow me to make a toast to Nomengrad and our honored visitors. Citizens of Nomengrad, I have reached a verdict in this case. I have found the sable Gulu Gulu to be at fault, since it is very obvious that he stole from the lemmings. <clears throat> I have therefore come to the decision that the mole is obligated to replace all the food stolen from the lemmings and to find his own dinner whenever he's hungry. This is how nature meant the sable to feed hunting food, not stealing it, understand? Yes, I'm sure he does, right, Gulu? <laughs> Understood, Your Honor. Danny, please be sure the representative of Gulu signs. Please sign this statement for us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Will all the hens come forward to state your case? Uh, 
would the representative of the rooster please step forward as well? <laughs> you will please be quiet. I remind the defendant to behave. My goodness, I'm surprised at you. It's time you came to respect these proceedings. Now let's move forward, shall we? You may present the next case, Mr. Prosecutor. Judge Klaus, my client maintains the peace is disturbed daily by this mischievous bully making so much noise with his cock-a-doodle-doo. Not just at dawn. No, no, but any time he feels he can startle them. <laughs> is getting on in years and can't stand all this commotion. You have made your point well. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Klaus, for your consideration. Are you ready to give us an explanation of what's behind this trouble, sir? Yes, sir. My client may sometimes get a little loud. He knows that, Your Honor, and he's sorry. But in his opinion, no one pays enough attention to such a handsome <gasps> fellow as himself. He's sorry he disturbed the Heathcock, for whom he has great respect. Now, I conclude that we all know that it is a rooster's nature to crow, but there is no need for him to do so all the time. From now on, he can still cock-a-doodle-doo, but in the morning time only, except during the holidays, when twice a day he's allowed to crow to his heart's content. But he is not to disturb all the other birds or surprise them when they are sleeping. Sir, we all believe it's a fair decision. How about you, friend? Is it fair to your client? Sir, my client will obey your decision, although he feels it's a shame to stifle his lovely voice. Would you please put your signature here? Of course. The game starts soon. <laughs> Court is dismissed for the remainder of the day. It's time to watch the game. Friends, and remember, you're going to all be observing some championship hockey here at the beautiful Nomengrad Hockey Arena. The winner of this match will be considered the best hockey team in Siberia, so both teams want to win very badly. The married men are in their uniforms of black with red trim, and the bachelors are in brown. The teams the are lined up at the blue line, and the game's about to begin. Hmm. What a contest! Oh. He scores, ladies and gentlemen, and it's two to nothing for the married men. It's unusual the score isn't close, and no one gets ahead so early in the game. But having the wives as cheerleaders gives the married men a real lift. Married men, married men, shoot that score! Hit those bachelors out the door! This contest isn't even close. They're all around the goal, skating wildly. The goalie is down. They score! My word. It's hard to believe, but the bachelors aren't up to their usual championship caliber. They need help. They are playing badly, but gee, I only brought figure skates. Goal! Oh. Goal! Oh, boy. Goal! Oh. It must be a surprise to you fans who were thinking this championship would be a tight game. The period is coming to an end. Bachelor Zero, Married Men Six. It's as good as over, folks. Hmm. I'm very disappointed. You it's must be, job. Igor.
palace. Though it may be too late, you can't give up. Here's a player who uh -huh. can surely help. He can play any position. I'm sure I'm not even in the same league with you fellas. Be a sport and play, Danny. But Igor, I haven't even had a chance to practice with the team. Danny, once you're on the ice, you'll find they're no better than you are. <laughs> Go ahead, lad. It can't do any harm to try it. But Judge, I'm used to having some music. It gives me a rhythm to skate to. We have it. Our orchestra will play any song you'd like. Well, why didn't anybody say so? I can really move like the wind with a little music to skate to. Everybody, oh boy, have I got a surprise today. A guest player is joining us, the one and only Danny! Yay! He'll show you how it's done. <laughs> it looks like play is getting underway in the last period of our game. That's something you don't see every day. He ate the puck. <laughs> Guess rubber in his diet will give him that old bounce. <laughs> I see a puck is now on the ice. We're about to start this final session. <laughs> How do you like that? I'm starting to think that this Danny character can't skate. Take it easy on him. He needs music when he skates. Hmm? Music? Folks, I believe we've got a figure skater among us. He needs a song. I'll get some music. Come on, play a song. It's amazing, propelling himself between players. He's put the bachelors back in the game. Music is what stimulates him. <laughs> Keep the music going, Maestro Igor. Uh-huh, and a one, and a two, and a three. Huh? Huh? And Danny's got the puck again, ladies and gentlemen. But it looks like the married men have got him surrounded. And Danny shoots the puck. But wait, where is the puck gone? No one seems to be able to see where it went. But wait, Danny still has it. He's fooled the entire American men's team. He's going for the score. Oh. I'm really dumbfounded. It appears that Danny plays like an artist. All right, all right. Let's go, bachelors! Let's go, bachelors! Closes the scoring gap with another goal. Gentle gnomes and ladies, he's amazing. Goal! Hmm. Line up for the face-off. Quit now. Any kind of song you choose to give us is all right. Do you know a waltz? Sure, Judge Klaus. Much closer, merely a point separates the teams, and time is still left. Let's go, team! Let's go, team! Your music works like a charm. Thank you. I'd have to admit, I'd never guessed Danny played so well. No one could have guessed it. Maybe we need more rhythm. It's an incredible...
unfavorable situation and just a single minute to go. I'll take that. Gangway. <laughs> hey, what did I do? I think this is against the rules, guys. Well, fans, the married men are penalized for playing too rough, and Danny gets a penalty shot. This will be the last shot of the game. Hey! Huh? He's eaten it all up. This is most difficult. I'm told the puck's been completely gulped down and play cannot go on because nobody has got more of them. What an unhappy situation. Well, I'm baffled completely, boys. Somebody's got to be the champ, though. Help us, Judge. Please make a fair settlement. Determine who won the championship. I can't decide up here, my good friend. I'll have to talk to each team. Your team played well. You deserve to win. Hmm? Not to worry, esteemed married men and bachelors. Please hear my good friend the judge attempt to solve this. We have all been favored to participate in a most amazing experience. I'm so proud to be observing gnomes of this caliber, married men or bachelors, competing to the best of their ability. The married men were leading, then the bachelors caught up. It's been an exciting game that should stay a tie. I pronounce both teams to be champions. Please show approval by applauding. Schlitz fights! In the next exciting episode, Klaus and Danny answer the call of the Spanish gnomes, which gives Juliana a chance to finish her cleaning and let the dust settle. In Spain, they must deal with a dangerous forest fire which threatens the lives of the gnomes, the human beings, and all the animals as well. Will Klaus and Danny be able to solve the puzzle of romantic and mysterious Spain? Keep on crying and there's no respect for anything.